the bra here. I got a quick brain teaser for you. If I'm down three with 30 seconds left, is it better to take the three or is it easier to take the two and attempt to file a bad free throw shooter and get another possession? Here's my friend Sal with the answer. That's a very, very interesting question, LeBron. Calculating the probabilities of if you were to take a three, what's your probability of tying the game and then being able to win in overtime? That can be done on paper, but the scenario where you take a two and you attempt to foul the opposing team and they might make none or one or two free throws and then you might get another possession and you take another two, that's more complicated. You could attempt to do it on paper, but instead I've written a little computer simulation here. And this type of a simulation is called a Monte Carlo simulation. And literally, it'll run the scenarios. It'll do it as many times as we put in this variable over here. So we're going to set it up so we get an accurate number. We're going to do it a thousand times for each of those scenarios and see what fraction in each scenario, which fraction do we end up winning. And that's a pretty good estimate of the probability of us actually winning the game depending on which strategy we choose. The rest of these things, these variables that we set right over here, these are the parameters that will essentially drive the outcomes. This three-point percentage, this is your three-point percentage. I have it low here because I'm assuming it's going to be a hard three. It's going to be lower than a typical three-point percentage. But obviously, if this number, if you set it higher, then the three will look better. If you set it lower, then the two is going to look better. This is your two-point percentage. I'm assuming here it's a, going to be a relatively easy two because the other team is going to be defending as heavily against a two. So I put a little higher, but you can play with the numbers to see what you get in different scenarios. This is the probability of the opponent taking a two. This is the opponent's free throw percentage. Once again, if this is very high, then the fouling is not going to look as good. If this is low, fouling might make sense. And I put this a little bit lower than the league average because assuming that you'll attempt to foul or you have a reasonable chance of fouling one of the weaker free throw shooters. This is how much time goes off the clock when you take a two. This is how long it takes you to foul. This is offensive rebound percentage. And then I have a slightly different thing that I separated out is the 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 percent chance of a team taking a uh, uh, a free throw, if they miss their second free throw, the percent chance that they'll actually be able to rebound it. So that's 15%. You can play with that. And this is just their probability or your percent chance of winning in overtime. And I just put that at 50-50. And the rest of this really just uses those parameters to go through the simulations. This is a little code right over here to just to draw the background or, or actually load the images. This is the meat, these two functions. So take three is a scenario where we go for the three. So we try to make the three. If we make the three, then we have essentially tied the game. And now we're going into overtime. And if we win in overtime, then we win. If neither of those things are true, or if one of those things end up not being true, either we make the three and we lose in overtime, or we don't make the three, then false. We didn't win. And this function is going to be called as many times as that variable trials. So it could be called a 1,000 times, a million times, whatever we set it to, to figure out what fraction of those scenarios do we win in. This does the same thing for the taking the two and trying to foul. It gets a little bit more complicated, but it's not too bad. And it is a very simple simulation. I think a lot of people listening might be able to add some uh, a little bit more a little bit more complexity to maybe make it a little bit more accurate. But what it does, it keeps track of who has the possession, how many points you're down, how much time is left. And the way I implement it, it really only works for the specific scenario we talked about. You would probably want to make it fancier if you had more time on the clock or if you wanted to cover more point, more scenarios of different uh, uh, point spreads. But this is essentially saying, look, while we're going to keep running this scenario while there's time left on the clock. This clause says, talking about what do we do if we have the possession? If we're down by more than three, if we're down by more than three, then we're going to want to take it as quickly as possible. And we just take the minimum time off necessary to shoot a two. Otherwise, Otherwise, we would want, we would actually want to run down the clock. So in the, if we happened, for whatever reason, while going through this over and over again to be up, we would probably want to run the clock down before we take a shot. Now this right over here says, remember, this is a scenario where we're taking a two. So this says, OK, let's try to go for the two. If we make it, then we're down by two less, and then we the possession goes to the other team. If we do not make the the if we do not make it, does the opposing team rebound it? So this is essentially saying, does the opposing if the opposing team makes the rebound, so we did not make the offensive rebound, then they now have the possession. This clause over here is well. What are the cases where we don't have the possession? And so this this is this is essentially what we say. If, if we're down by if we're down at all, if we're down by more than zero points, then we're going to try to foul. So we have to take the time off the clock to foul. 
then the opponent is going to take their two free throws right over here. And there's a little bit of code to see if we actually, if they're able to, if in the situation that they miss the second free throw, there's some probability that the opponent might actually be able to get that offensive rebound. So we actually put that in there as well. And then there's the scenarios where there's the scenarios where maybe we just happen not to be down, in which case, in which case the opponent is likely to take it to, or at least we assume that. And this is actually a place where I think other people could modify it more. But the bottom line is, if we're not if we're not down, we definitely don't want to foul. So we're not fouling in this scenario. And then this, remember, we're in this two point scenario. This essentially says, look, if after if when the clock ends, if when time goes to zero, if we're down by more than zero, we lost. If we're down by less than zero, we won. Otherwise, it's tied and we go into overtime. And so this clause right over here tests to see if we win in overtime. And then all of the other things are really just to draw. This draws the bars. This draws some of the numbers on top of it. And then this is where we actually run the trials. So we call this, we call this as many times as there are trials, that trials variables. And we count how many times do we win taking a three? How many times do we lose taking a three? How many times do we win taking a two? How many times do we lose taking a two? And then we just display everything right over there. So now that we have a decent understanding of the program itself, let's get a little bit of a drum roll and see whether it makes sense to take the three, given these assumptions. So instead of having 10 trials, let's give it a big number. Let's say 1,000 trials. And let me reset this thing. So restart it right over here. And so you see it's getting better and better approximations. This is what fraction of the trials so far resulted in a victory. So right now, taking a two looks like it's about 15 16% look like we got a victory. Here it's 12, 13. As we get more and more trials, we're more likely to have a much, much more accurate, accurate sense of our probabilities, a more accurate approximation of the probabilities. But let's see. It's getting close. It's getting close. Let's see. And we get two. Well, based on this, it looks like there's, based on the assumptions we made, and this is important, it's really based on these assumptions, it looks like we were better off by a little bit, slightly higher, taking the easy two and then trying to foul. But if we change things, and I'll make it lower trials just so that we don't have to wait all day. Let's make it 300 trials. But you see if you were to raise your three-point percentage to say, let's say it's 35%, and let's say your two-point, let's say the two is much harder, than we had before. Let's say it's 40%. And let's say your opponent is a really good free throw shooter. So let's say it's 80%. I suspect that you will have a different outcome. So let's restart it and see what happens. So now all of a sudden, it looks like it looks like you're much better off given these assumptions. You're much better off of going for the three to tie and go into overtime. So these are really the assumptions that drive it for this simulation.